All right, guys, I rarely talk about my secret weapon when it comes to music production, but this plugin is going to advance and open up a whole new world of sound for you if you know how to use it. So this plugin is actually called Patcher. Now, Patcher, you may wonder what it actually does. In short, you could turn any plugin that your favorite plugin is and make it modular. What does that mean? You could add things that control other things. So for example, if we open up Serum, I could have FL Studio functions control this wavetable mover or control the pitch or the panning. Okay, so what this means is that I can do stuff that the plugin can't do itself. So let me show you guys an example. I'll start from scratch just so you can follow all the steps if you choose to. Okay, so let's delete these and let's deactivate. How do you delete these <laughs> these plugins? Okay, let's delete these plugins. So the first thing we need to do is open up Patcher. So we're going to click here, the plus button, and we're going to go to Patcher. Okay, so you may ask, okay, what is the point of this? Again, you could take any plugin and make it super unique and super specific to what you're trying to do. Okay, so this is how you don't sound like everybody else. Basically, just right click. We're going to add a plugin. We're going to add this plugin called Serum just for demonstration purposes to make it simple. Now we're going to right click and we're going to add another plugin called the Fruity Formula Controller. Um, in short, this has different functions and different waveforms we could use to control other things. Okay, so let's go to Fruity Formula Controller. We're gonna right click and we need to create an output. So in short, we're creating a cable that connects this Fruity Formula Controller to Serum. And we have to tell this cable to do something to Serum. So now we're trying to decide what should it do to Serum. Let's right click and we're gonna go to inputs this time, go to the parameters and here are all the things we can control with the, fru with the Fruity Formula Controller. So that it's easy for you guys to understand, we're gonna do the fine tune pitch of oscillator A. OK, so all we have to do now is connect these cables. So this red cable is using the Fruity Formula controller to control and manipulate the fine tuned pitch of this oscillator here. So let me show you what that would sound like just inside the plugin itself. So you can hear the pitch going up and down. OK, so we're letting a, a formula controller control how that pitch moves. So what we're going to do is go to Fru Fruity Formula Controller and go to presets, let's go to LFO and let's do a basic sine wave. Now, once I hit play, this fruity uh, formula controller will start to move. Okay, so now I have to play a note and you'll hear the pitch go up and down. But let's say that's too basic. What I wanna do is lower the range so that it's not going, it's not going all the way up. So let's pull this down so it's subtle. So it's more of a subtle pitch bend. And what we can also do is modulate the modulator. So now we can right click and add another Fruity Formula controller. Okay, so let's do Formula Controller. We can right click, select the output. Let's go to Output, turn that on. And now we can use this controller to control this controller. So now we're creating frequency modulation, basically. So let's go to this controller. Let's make an input and let's select the thing that we want to control. So in this case, we want to control oscillator, or excuse me, the B parameter because the B parameter controls the range or we can control the speed. But in this case, uh, let's try controlling B. OK, just so you guys can hear it. Let's do input parameter B. And now we need to connect the formula controller to the other formula controller. I'm going to rename this so I know what's what. So this is the master control and this one is the I'll say the slave control, even though that's not technically properly right because technically Serum is the one being ultimately uh, manipulated. But to keep it simple, let's go over here to the master. Let's go to presets and let's go to LFO and we can set up what's called randomness. OK, you can also set up different uh, tools like inversion tools. We're not going to get into all that. Um, let's just do randomness. Whoops, clicked on the wrong one. Randomness. So what this does is it creates a white noise shape and this white noise will control the the width of the pitch bending. So now if we go into Serum, we should see these numbers being more random. Now that's important because we're adding a jitter to the sound. So now I can go inside of Serum and do the Serum-y things that I want to do. Let's do Note on Alternative. Let's do Oscillator A Panning. And now I can turn the sound into more of a vintage sound because now we're using more of a random approach to uh, the pitch. OK, so now these small little things. So now what we're going to do is go in and start manipulating different parameters within Serum. So let's go inside of Serum and see what do we want to manipulate. Firstly, let's turn up the voicing. And 
and let's say we want to manipulate the effects. So we're going to get a little different here. Let's go to the effects. Let's add some dimension. Okay, that dimension adds like a slapback reverb type of sound. So we're going to use a Fruity Formula controller or a peak controller. You know, there's different things we could use. So let's do a Fruity Peak controller this time. Fruity Peak controller. Where are you at? Here it is. Peak controller. And we're going to right click, select the output. Let's do a controller. We're going to do peak. So we want the peak of this envelope to control something about Serum. In this case, we need to find the parameter for the dimension mix level. So let's right click. Let's go to inputs. Let's go to parameters. And it pulls up the list of all the things that we can modulate within this plugin. And this is a menu of stuff that most of us don't see because we don't go into the uh, parameters that we can manipulate inside of FL Studio. So this takes a plugin to a whole different level because now we can manipulate stuff that we can't even do inside the plugin itself. So now we need to go to the effects and figure out um, where the dimension mix level is. So I'm quickly skimming. I see effects here. All right, let's go from the top. So I can just quickly skim. So I'm looking for, if I don't find it, we'll pick something else and uh, maybe do filtering. It might be a little bit quicker to do filtering. So here's verb, reverb, okay, distortion. Okay, we have effects uh, filter. We have the hyper. So here's the hyper. And then where's dimension? Hyper dimension mix level. Okay, so this is it right here, I believe. So if we modulate this, we're going to grab the red dot and pull it over to the hyper dimension mix level. You can read the value in the top left. So now we need audio input for the Fruity Peak controller to even um, work. OK, so this yellow is audio and we need to select. Now, this is using MIDI. So in this case, we would have to grab uh, the output audio that would self modulate this dude. Dang, we need to figure out another way to get audio in here. So in this case, let's see what we could do. Let's go to inputs audio. You see, we only have that one parameter I'm trying to think we already made audio. So how we're going to do this, maybe another serum. We'll use another serum. So here we're going into deep, 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 deep sound design. So let's use the output audio of this serum. Let's disconnect this and move this serum to the fruity uh, controller. So now what I'm going to do is set up a decay curvature. So now every time I hit the note, it creates a decay curvature like this. OK, so you can go through. And if I turn up the bass, you'll hear that dimension. The higher I turn it. OK, so you could do it in an inverted. So every time I hit a note, you could have the dimension turn off. OK, so it's a thousand unique things you could do that you can't necessarily do easily inside of Serum. OK, so again, you could flip flop this to have the bass level down and then create an envelope to where it fades. So then you have dimension or reverb sound. I'm going to exaggerate the, the exaggerate the dimension size so that you could hear it. So basically, it's creating an envelope that falls in decay curvature based off of this shape here. I'm going to make this a sine wave to make this a little bit smoother. You can't hear this audio because we don't have audio output to the actual FL Studio. We're just using this audio to control an envelope.
Okay, so I showed you something really simple, but there are really advanced things you could do. Again, nobody goes about sound design this way because they don't think that they can modulate the things outside of the plugin itself. So again, this could, this goes way deeper. I just wanted to make it palatable for people who don't understand sound design or signal flow. Um, but that is the secret weapon that nobody really talks about. Again, what it does in short is turn anything in this plugin that we can modulate into a modular thing unto itself. As you see here, the pitch keeps moving because we have the randomness turned on. That's something you can technically do in Serum, but it's a little bit different. Okay, so that's the stuff you could do. And you could do that for any plugin. It doesn't have to be Serum. Every plugin has a unique parameter list. Okay, so I just showed you in Serum because it's easy to understand. So I want to thank you guys for watching, but that is my secret weapon for 2024 being a music producer in FL Studio. Thank you guys. Peace.